going to be speaking on spikes in his hands and spear in his side. So we're going to start off in John chapter 19, verse 32 and 34. Let me turn on my, uh, my stopwatch. I'm not trying to be before y'all too long today. You heard that before though, right? So John 19, verse 32, 34. Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they broke not his legs. But one of the soldiers with the spear pierced his side, and forthward came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true. And he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. For these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. And again, another scripture saith, they shall look on him whom they pierce. So the breaking of the legs of a crucified man, it, it hastened his death. So when Christ is on the cross, the Romans, will, they would break his legs. They would break their legs of the soldiers or, or break the legs on the people who was getting crucified in order to speed up the death. So if you're on a cross, you know, your legs is tied, your legs is not, you know, your feet is nailed to the cross, and you're trying to breathe, you're, you're having trouble breathing. So what they would do, they would push up from their legs to, to get some more air in, right? So they had to, they were trying to speed up his death to make sure that he was dead. That's why they would break the legs of the, of the, crucif the crucified people. But the first thing that John was trying to do in this situation, he was trying to uh, prove and demonstrate that Christ has, has died. He has suffered a physical death. He actually died physically. So you have a lot of people, a lot of unbelievers, a lot of different religions, a lot of different cults. They say that Jesus, he didn't actually die. He just fainted. You know, he passed, passed out, you know, for three days, but he wasn't really dead. So what John is trying to show us, he's trying to demonstrate that Christ actually suffered and died a physical death on the cross. So we see in verse 31 to 34, John presents us some witnesses. He presented us the Roman executioners as witnesses to death of Jesus. So these, these Roman executioners, I remember, these were professionals. They, they, they knew what they were doing, right? So they were certain that he had already died. And so these Roman people, they are familiar with death. It's one of their first go around. They used to killing people on the cross. So they knew if somebody was alive or not, and they knew if they were dead or not. So... What John is trying to show us here, he's trying to present them as credible witnesses. You know, lately I've been liking some like law enforcement type of stuff. I like, you know, looking at evidence and crime shows, right? So what John is trying to present, he's trying to present us witnesses to show that, that Christ was actually dead. And who better to be a witness than the Roman executioners? They do this for, that's, that's what they do. They're professional killers, right? So it wasn't like they didn't know what they were doing. They said, this man is already dead. Now, you don't have to go here, but if you, up in that 30th verse, um, it says that it was a Sabbath. It was a high Sabbath day when this happened, right? right? right. So these Jews, they knew um, that this was on a Passover. So Christ had died on a Passover, a high religious day, their most religious day uh, in a Jewish uh, religion. So what they were trying to do, they were trying to follow the law, <laughs> They, these, these Jews were actually trying to obey the Lord, obey God. <laughs> but at the same time, they crucified God in the flesh. Yeah. All right. Come on. So we see how these Jewish religious leaders, they were hypocrites. Yeah. They, they, they thought that they were doing the will of God by crucifying this man. This man was innocent. Yes, was. They put him on the cross, and they were saying how, we got to take him down because of the Passover day, the Sabbath day. The Sabbath is coming. So they were really religious. Yeah. So they were trying to say, according to our custom standard traditions, we can't let this man stay up on his cross because our Sabbath is it's our Sabbath day. So we got to bring him down. We got to take him off the cross. Yeah. Ain't that hypocritical? Mm -hmm. So these were the people that Christ came to and came for, but it went over their head because they got caught up in religion. So Christ was actually crucified on the Passover. That's right. So this Bible said that he's our Passover lamb. Yeah. See, God is a poet. He, like, he, like, he, he does things intentionally. So Christ just didn't die on a regular day. Okay. He died on a particular time. He came in the fullness of time. 
<laughs> you know, he came at a particular time. And he died on a particular day. So God was putting this thing out. He was like, I'm going to kill him on Passover because he's my Passover lamb. So the Jews should have picked it up. When Christ said, I'm the lamb of God to take away the sin of the world, he's the Passover lamb. So the Jews was they was cutting the they was cutting the goats in the, in the in the they were in the temple killing the Passover lamb religiously, at the same time hanging the real Passover lamb on the cross. So this man was an innocent man. And 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 see, I got a lot of smoke for these religious people. I do, y'all know I do. And 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 because I see a lot of similarities today. These religious leaders was the ones who was Christ, that's his brethren, you know. And they was trying to follow these religious traditions, right? They were trying to uh, know God in their religion. And the Bible said they were making up their own religious traditions. So not only were they follow, trying to follow the law of Moses, but they was adding man-made things on to it. <laughs> they was adding on extra stuff to it. And Christ came on the scene and said, this ain't what I was talking about. This ain't the law. This ain't what we're doing here. Y'all adding the traditions of men. And, 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 and it, made, it, made, it was making the regular people, uh, the people that are actually trying to know God, they were been stumbling. They were stumbling over this stuff because they were trying to add on some extra laws. <laughs> and Christ came on the scene and messed up the whole game plan. Yeah. 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 Now, I question this because these folks are very religious. And I wonder if Christ was walking this earth today, would we even recognize him? I know we'll get him wrong for physically. I know that. If y'all come on Wednesday night, you know he's going to look over. I'm the Christ. No, it don't look like him to me. I've been seeing this other dude, you know. But will we allow him into our, into our churches? Because I'm looking, at, I'm looking at this thing like if Christ was really walking earth today, would we even recognize him? And, and, and would, we, would we even allow him to come into our churches? I don't, I don't think we would. You know, these modern-day churches, it seems like um, they're accepting everything. And I don't think Christ would accept everything. You know, y'all do the math. Y'all just look at what, look what we got. Look what the issues that we got on today's day. And would, would Christ really be accepting all this mess? I don't think he would. Nope. Now, what I think he would do, he would definitely love them. He for sure would love them, of course. But guess what he'll do? He'll tell them the truth at the same time. Yeah. See, what well, Christ said, he came and he brought he, grace and truth. So you can tell people the truth and be gracious at the same time. That don't mean, that mean you don't love them. You tell them the truth. But the thing is, in our church today, we're not telling them the truth. The truth is gone. We, see, we, we got this Christ where he, he just accepts everything. He don't accept everything. And I believe, I believe this biblical Christ would have came in our church today, and he would have been rebuking some folks, rebuking them pastors or preachers, because they got a circuit of money, rings, and and profiting, making money off the gospel, right? And they're not even preaching him no more. So I think Christ would came again and kicked over some stuff again today and said, this is a, this is a mess y'all dealing with, right? So Christ ain't going to accept everything. Now, what he would do, he would extend grace, right? He would extend grace. But he doesn't extend grace without repentance. And, and our teachers today and our pastors today, we don't believe in repentance no more. We're not preaching repentance anymore in the church. And we're thinking Christ is going to be just going to throw it to him. He's going to accept everything. He's not. He will offer you grace, but with repentance, though. You don't get grace without repentance. See, see that's what I'm saying? See, so we got this thing messed up. Amen. We're thinking we're going to come to Christ and he's going to forgive us. But that's a qualification for that forgiveness. He said you got to repent. And see, that's, that's what we don't want to hear today. But these modern-day preachers, they look better than me. They sound better than me. They talk better than me. They preach better than me. But they're not preaching repentance. And they just letting everything come on in, and, and no truth is being taught on. There are some issues out there that's real black and white, but we want to make it gray. And Christ would have came and straightened this stuff out. So I think we would have kicked him out of these modern-day churches. He wouldn't even be welcome in these modern-day churches. Because you know why? He'll be offending some folks. Because truth offends. I don't, it don't matter what it is. Truth offends. You know, and, and, and I look at these religious leaders, you know, now, oh, it, it is what it is, but I, I, I see it very, I see a lot of this stuff in us. The religious leaders, they were in bed with the Roman government. See, so, so you, you, got, you, got, you got to look at what was going on back in Jesus' day. See, Jesus came on the scene and messed up their little whole playpen. 
because the religious leaders, they was making money. See, the Roman government has offered the church folks, the leaders of the church people, offer them prominent positions in the government. Did you know that? <laughs> so, so these so-called high priests and these chief priests, guess what they were working with? They was working with the government, too. You, you see what I'm saying? You can't do both now, church. <laughs> now, we can't work for the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the government at the same time. Now, we're trying this thing. We're trying to play around with it. But what happened was these religious leaders, they were in bed with Rome. <laughs> Is this too much? They were in bed with Rome. They was getting paid under the table with Rome. So they was on the payroll of the Roman government. So Jesus comes on the scene, and he's coming here preaching this kingdom, and the religious leaders preaching the government. Oh, y'all don't want this. <laughs> oh, y'all don't want this. Christ came on the scene and had a whole new message. And the religious leader was like, uh-uh, you messing up my pocketbook, brother, Jesus. You messing me up here. <laughs> you, you messing up my, 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 my game here, right? So, so Jesus and the religious leaders had some beef. They had beef. Who do you think killed them? Because they looked at that pocketbook. They were in bed with Rome. They were in bed with the government. Please turn off your phones, please. So guess what happened? They got caught up in politics. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Pastor been trying to paint. People trying to tell you. The religious folks got caught up in politics. And in, 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 their, in, their, in their political pursuit, guess what they had? They had political agendas. I'm going to be the great high priest. I'm going to be the chief high priest. And remember what the Bible says that we got to kill him because, because if we don't kill him, then Rome's going to take away our, our place. That's what the religious leader said. See, Christ going to mess up everything for us if we don't kill him. So if we make the government mad, the, the Roman going to take away our place. Take over Israel's place. You know what I'm saying? They were under captivity. So basically what they were saying, the Roman, the, the, the uh, religious leader was trying to tell Jesus, Yo, stop all that. You, 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 you know, yeah. you know how we've been doing the slavery. Y'all the master gonna, y'all better stop talking like that. The master gonna get us. You know, that, that's how they would, Jesus, stop talking about this new kingdom thing because you're gonna make Caesar mad. Yeah. Y'all stop that. Y'all know, know how it is. Christ came on the scene and said, no, we're gonna push this kingdom agenda. And the, and the religious leader said, we ain't pushing the kingdom agenda. We're going to push the Roman agenda. Yeah, we with the government. Mm -hmm. So in, 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 in their political uh, pursuits and agendas, they had prominent positions that Rome gave them. Mm -hmm. The government gave them positions, right, and gave them money, right? Mm -hmm. So while they was pursuing pro political advances, political agendas, they rejected the king. Mm -hmm. The king came to them in the flesh and they rejected him because they was looking at Caesar and looking at Rome and looking at the government. So the king, the real king came and they missed the king. They chose the government over the kingdom. Oh, y'all don't like it. And, and, and don't that sound familiar today? With our religious leaders and our religious preachers, these mega preachers, are they in bed with the Roman government? Are they in bed with the system or are they with the kingdom? So we got a choice to make, y'all. We got a choice to make. We better pick the kingdom or the system, the kingdom or the government. And God is a jealous God, and he ain't going to let us play both sides. We're trying to be secret agent Christians and stuff and try to play both sides and try to be, you know, it ain't going to work. It sounds to me today, it sounds like these church, mega church folks and mega church pastors who, we ask them, why don't they just preach the truth? Why don't they just read the scripture and say, that's what the Bible says? They don't want to do that because they, they, they align with the government. They on that 501c3 thing. See, at, at some point, we're going to lose our 501c3. I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> we ain't relying on that. I'm done with all that planning. We're going to lose that. We, we might as well go ahead and be ready for it. But the, the religious leaders, they had picked sides, and they chose the system over the kingdom. Now that'll preach right there. Yes, it will. Now look at this. You don't have to go here, but in Deuteronomy 21, 22, this, this is the law. This, 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 the, this is what the Jewish law says. It says, if any man has committed a crime punishable, punishable by death, he is put to death, and you hang him on a tree. His body shall not remain all night on the tree, but you shall bury him the same day. 
for a hanged man is cursed by God, or cursed is every man that hangeth from a tree. See? So in Deuteronomy it says, if you've been hung from a tree, you're cursed. So cursed is every man that hangs from a tree. So, so the religious leaders, they knew that law, they knew that scripture, and they said, we got to get him down because the Sabbath day. So that's why they was trying, they was trying to get him off that cross. They were trying to follow the law. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with following the law. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just I'm telling you, they was religious with their stuff. Yeah. And they missed the king. Yes. <laughs> they missed the one. They missed the Messiah yeah. because they were trying to be extra religious. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so they thought they were doing the will of God. Now, in Psalm 34, 20, it says, he keepeth all his bones and not one of them is broken. That's a, that's a prophecy. So it was a Roman custom the Roman custom was to leave the criminals on that cross. You know what I'm saying? So the Romans wanted you to, the Romans said leave them up on there because they were trying to let you see <laughs> that that was a warning to anybody who was going to defy Rome. So Rome was saying, we're going to leave our people up there, and the Jews were saying, take them off. So, but see, and Rome said, you know what, we'll, 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 take, we'll, let, we'll let them take them down because they were in bed with the politicians. It's a, it's a, it's a pitiful thing. These Jewish leaders was politicians. Oh, y'all don't want this. <laughs> that, that, that's why Rome, that's why they, they, had, a, they had an agreement, agreement with Rome. Rome used to let them stay on, that, stay on that cross because you would see that person decaying on that cross, you'd be, like, you'd be scared. Rome, Rome wants to put fear in you. Uh-oh, I, I ain't going in there. But Rome wants to fear you. It won't put fear in you. So they would see you passing by. Oh, that man, who, what do you do? And they would just see him on the cross and his dead body decaying and stuff. That was, that was their thing to do because they were trying to get you psychologically scared. But they made a deal with, with the religious leader said, since your law says take them off, we'll take them off. They keep the peace, right? We don't want to no, keep the peace. So they were trying to keep the peace with the Jews and since not start an open another rebellion. They had a lot of rebellions pockets back then. Remember uh, Barabbas? Yeah. He, was, he was one of them rebels. <laughs> you know, people like that. Like, that's what our people, you know, you know what I'm saying? We're going to rebel against the government type people. We know one of them in our family. We're going to rebel. I'm like, bro, you can't do that. You can't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it ain't going. But you, you have people like that. Barabbas, one of them, he wanted to re revolt people. Like, I just want to take down the government myself. Yeah. Remember, they said, who do y'all want, Barabbas or Jesus? They said, give us Barabbas. Yeah, they, they, chose, they chose Barabbas over Christ. Yeah. See, see, Paul was trying to give them options, give them, give them ways out. Yeah. I wiped my hand off this man. This man is innocent. I don't want no part of this blood. This man, he, Pilate knew what he knew what he was doing. Yeah. But he had to give in to the government. They said, the, the Jews said, uh, you ain't no friend of Caesar if you, if you don't, you know, crucify this man. Cause he talking about he a king. Yeah. Only we only know one king that's Caesar. You see how 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 wrapped up they got into the government? Yeah. They got comfortable with that government. We don't know no king but Caesar. What? And Christ came talking about the kingdom of heaven. Yes, he did. So which one y'all want? The kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of uh, Caesar? And, uh, see. So, so Christ got a better promises. You know, and all through the biblical history, the Jews was promised a kingdom, and they were promised a king that's going to reign, reign on that throne. And they didn't see him. They didn't see him. Because I, I don't see this conquering king like, like, we, like I say he's supposed to be in the Bible. He's supposed to be coming back, conquering and killing the nations and stuff. Oh, it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. But they missed it because they were so fleshly. And they was getting paid under the table. You hear me? They got the little, the little checks and little, what you call them, little checks they give it out. <laughs> little stimulus packet checks. And they said, we'll take the stimulus packet checks. And they said, forget about this Jesus. He ain't giving me nothing. We'll take the stimulus check instead. <laughs> see, see, the government, they'll throw you some crumbs. Oh, yeah. You see how they do? See how the devil, they'll throw you some crumbs. Here, take this instead. And Christ offering you a whole kingdom over here. And we, and we getting, we getting baited in by the little crumbs the government offering us. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm saying something. Oh, yeah. All the promises are in the kingdom. <laughs> so I don't know why we're not yearning for the kingdom. That's where all the promises are at. That's where the righteousness is at. That's where you're going to have a real government by a king that's going to rule. Because this government here is trash. I said it. And I said it again. I ain't scared none of y'all today. Trash. Start from the top. <laughs> and I don't care who it is. Black, blue, and red. They both of them trash. So that's why the Jews wanted to uh, take him off the cross. They wanted to expedite it. So they wanted to break his legs to, to make sure that he was dead, right? So why did Jesus die so quickly? We don't know why he died so quickly, right? But we can speculate. Was it because he was tormented spiritually? You know, uh, there's a lot that's going on. You're on that cross, man, that's a lot to take in. You're taking the sins of the world. 
talking about mental anguish that would have on you. You take, you know, you take it on the sins of Sister Jesse, like you know, all the sins she done had and committed in her lifetime, and and then take it on my sins. And that's a lot of torment, mental anguish to have on you, right? Just mine alone, boy. Ooh, who wanna burn my sins? Ain't nobody raise their hand. Okay, <laughs> I don't wanna burn mine either. So, so. You know, he saved us from the wrath of God. So the Father forsook him because he became a substitute. You know, he became sin for us, and he became a substitute for, on our behalf. So maybe it was his spiritual uh, suffering that he was, you know, that contributed to his death, that he died so quickly. Um, or it could be, it could be he got beat up twice. He, he, he got flogged and beaten twice. That was illegal. So he took a beating first because, remember, Pilate was trying to give him a way out and say, I don't want to really crucify him because I don't find no fault in him. And so he said, let me just beat him up instead. So he beat him up instead. They said, that wasn't good enough. We want him to crucify him. So he was already beaten once. And then now that Pilate said, okay, fine, I'll give you a will crucify him, he got beaten up again. So he got, he got beaten twice, which was illegal. <laughs> you know, that's double jeopardy. Y'all know the law. Some of y'all been, you know, yeah, yeah, y'all know the law. Y'all, y'all been, double jeopardy can't be tr- tried twice. But he got tried, got a try twice, so maybe that was why he died so quick. You know, um, the other two men on the cross, they was they were still alive. And they broke his leg and they had, they died, but they came to Christ and they said he's already dead. So the so the point the, the soldiers knew that he was already dead. So they, in order to make sure that he was dead, they put the spear in his side. So they struck they they put the spear in his side. So if he was alive, then you would know he'd have been oh you know he'd have said something. But when they poked their spirit aside, what happened? Water and blood came out. So they knew this man was really dead. And remember, these were some professional killers. They knew exactly what death looks like. So um, John is trying to show us that this man actually died a physical death. He just, he, he just wasn't passed out. He just didn't fade away. You know, he just wasn't, you know, you know he was dead. So we know that it's the blood which saved us from wrath. So that's part maybe why the blood and water came out. Blood saved us from wrath of God. And Christ atoned for our sins. He made propitiation through his shed blood. And the water symbolized in the cleansing or the purification of, uh, through Christ. So the water washes us. The blood saves us. So you can see like a double cure there. The blood and the water working together. You know, the blood saving us, delivering us from wrath. The water washing us and purifying us, right? So what we do know that he died. That's what we do know. In the Roman um, soldiers, they knew of that. So, I'm not a medical p- person, but they said that um, when they when they hit his their heart, there's a there's a capillary somewhere around that heart, and it holds water. So when it, when they hit his heart, that water and the blood will both come out at the same time. That's what the medical doctors say. So they say that could be like a form of a, an autopsy to show that he died, you know, from a, a, a heart attack, like a heart killed him. But they said he was actually gone. He was dead. So it wasn't no faking about this thing. Let's look at Psalm 22 and 16. Let's look at Psalms 22 and 16. Now, the Psalms 22, it's a great prophecy book. We're not going to get all of them. We're going to hit some of them. But this is the Psalm of David. He was speaking of prophecies thousands of years before this even, before Christ was even born. They were speaking prophetic um, prophecies about his crucifixion, his suffering. So Psalm 22 and 16, for dogs have compassed me, they assembly, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. This was David talking, yeah. thousand years beforehand. But he's trying to, it was a prophetic word that was talking about Christ also in the future. So Psalms 22 is one of the most powerful passages of the Old Testament. It prophes- prophetically foreshadowed the suffering of Jesus and the promised Messiah. Um, Psalms 22 and 1, you don't got to go there, faith, but... It says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Haven't we heard that? This is, this is David talking about this. Now, David, had, he was going through stuff. Now, we don't know exactly why he was saying all this stuff, but we know he had a lot of opposition and a lot of enemies. So he felt forsaken. And Christ did the same thing in Matthew 27 and Mark 15, 34. In uh, Psalms 22 and 7, I got that on our faith. Psalms 22 and 7, it says, all who see me snare at me, they separate with the lip, they wag the head, saying, "Commit yourself to the Lord. Let Him deliver him. Let Him rescue him, because He delights in Him." They, they were mocking Him on the cross. Mm-hmm. Don't that sound familiar? Yes. You remember uh, in the Gospels, it's in Luke, uh, in Matthew, and Mark. It says the people stood by looking on Him, 
even the rulers were sneering at him. See, Christ was a joke. He was a mockery. Yes, he, was. he saved others. Let him save himself. If this is the Christ of, of, of God, his chosen one, the soldiers mocked him, coming up to him, offering him sour wine and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Yeah. See, they mocking him. Yeah. If you're the so-called king, save yourself. Yeah. Now, who's going to have the laugh, last laugh in the end? Yeah. He laughing now. <laughs> They're going to be crying later. <laughs> you laugh at now, but you're going to cry later. Psalms uh, 22 and 18 says, They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. That's back in Psalms. Same thing happened um, in Mark, Matthew, and all the gospel. They said, And they crucified him, dividing up his garments among themselves, casting lots for them to decide what each man should take. So they gambling over his robe and stuff. So uh, that 22 and 16 where it talks about uh, dogs have surrounded me, a man of evildoers has encompassed me, they pierced my hands and feet. He's talking about uh, they were surrounded by hostile Gentiles. That, now, the Jews called the Gentiles dogs back then. Amen. So that's what he was talking about. He's talking about these dogs out here surrounding me, these evildoers. He's talking about the Roman people, the Roman soldiers. Yeah. So we see in... Um, so this man delivered over to be predetermined plan and foreknowledge of God. You nailed to a cross by his by the hands of godless men and put him to death. That's in Acts two and twenty three. So basically, what it's showing is trying to show you that these prophecies of the future Messiah, nobody fulfilled these prophecies. So nobody in human history could fulfill all these prophecies, and nobody can. So the Messiah had to be born in a specific place, in a specific time. The Bible says that he had to be crushed. He had to be made an offering for sin. That's in Isaiah 53. He had to overcome the power of the grave. Yes. The Messiah had to come back again. He had to rise from the dead. Now, who can do that? <laughs> so, nobody. <laughs> uh, y'all know that. Y'all don't talk about it. Because the Catholics don't talk about it. Nobody can do it. And, and he had to be made the savior of the world. So, only one person fits this claim. The Messiah. The real one. Yeah. Now, okay, I'm doing pretty good on my time. Now, I, I want to spend some time with, with my brother. No, I ain't going to be here all day. I ain't going to be here all day. I, I, I want to talk about my boy. Um, we're going to do a case study of my boy, um, Brother Tommy. We're going to talk about Brother Tommy. Let's look at John 28 and verse 18. Now, I'm with you, Pastor. <laughs> When I was studying about my brother Tommy, I said, he looked very familiar. I said, you know, there's something about this. We done gave the boy a bad rap. I think we did. Let's look. We're talking about Dallas Thomas, you know, brother Tommy, you know. <laughs> John 20 and 18. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for the fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he said so, he showed them unto his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so I send you. He told them, Peace two times. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and they said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them, and, to who, and whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Denimus, he's a twin, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord, but he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, be, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas said unto him, My Lord and my God. Amen. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, Thou hast believed. 
Blessed are they that have not seen, yet 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 has believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life through his name. So, man, I'm looking at this thing, and I said, man, Brother Tommy, we give him a bad rap. You give him a bad rap, we call him Down Thomas, right? But see, Thomas was more of a skeptic than a doubter. You know, after all, Thomas, he did not ask for a special revelation. He just asked for the same proof that the disciples had, right? So Thomas was those type of people that he wanted to know for himself. I got to know this for myself. He was his own man. He will not let other people do the thinking for him, right? See, we have to experience the resurrected Christ personally, Brother Charles. See, we got to know him ourselves personally. See, my parents' faith, their belief, and their experience with the Christ, it ain't going to do nothing for me. It, it, it ain't going to save me. That's good they got their own faith in him, but it can't save me. I got to know him for myself. I got to know Christ for myself. I got to experience his resurrection and his power for myself. It's not good enough for, for them to have it, but I'm just looking, I'm going to get in through, they, I'm going to hitch my trail on them and get in because they believe. I got to know the Christ for myself. I got to have my own spirit, experience with him, right? I got to know him. And he made a special resurrection appearance for, for, uh, for Brother Tommy. You know, he met him at his own time. Now, look at this. Now, I ask, let me go back to the scripture here. Let's look at this. So we see that was the first day of the week. The doors were shut, and the disciples were assembled for the fear of the Jews. They were scared of these Jews. <laughs> you know, they were scared of these religious folks. <laughs> and, and you know why they were scared? It said Jesus came. He said they, they, they locked themselves up. When the doors were shut, they basically locked the door. It was on lockdown. You know, remember lockdown? <laughs> they was all together. They was on lockdown. They was quarantining because they were scared. <laughs> Y'all don't know what this. <laughs> they were scared so they had to go on lockdown. But they wasn't afraid of Jews because they were Jews. Uh, they was thinking that they just arrested my Lord. They killed him. They may come get us too. You remember? I know Peter. I, I seen you with him. I don't want to know them. But they knew that Peter and them and they was part of this Jesus group. So your, your man gone, and so they said they can, the religious Jews can come get us too. So they like they, they went hide and they went to hide. And yeah, and see it said Jesus came in the midst of them. See the Bible says when two or three together he'll be in the midst of them. That's what the Bible say. <laughs> see the Bible says that when two or three together he gonna be in your midst. So they all locked up assembled together. He just popped the phone in there. Now, the door was shut. They locked the doors up, and, and all of a sudden, he appeared unto them. <laughs> he showed them, and guess what he said? He said he stood in the midst of them. He stood in the midst of them. So this was some type of supernatural event happened. So he was resurrected, right? So he has a resurrected body. The doors are locked up, and they probably just panicking. They probably making plots and plans. What are we going to do, y'all? What are we going to do? They probably, you know, tripping out. Jesus popped up. And stood in the midst, the midst of the middle, yeah. stood in the middle of, and and he said, "Peace be unto you." Yeah. See, when Jesus shows up, he brings you peace. Yeah. See, 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 see. These people was panicking; they, they was in a bad mental state. But Jesus showed up and said, first thing he says, "Peace be unto you." See, they thought he was a ghost or something. They said, "How how how you get in here? You can't lock Jesus out, you know." He po he popped up on them. So he had a new body. He was a glorified body, which kind of gives us an idea of how our body's going to look like. The Bible says that uh, we're going to be like him. So if he could pop up, I could pop up too when I get my new body. You know, I ain't got my new body yet. But we're going to be doing some things with our new body. We're going to be like him. And we can still eat because the Bible said he was eating fish after the resurrection. So you can still have a physical body. And then he told them to touch me. Because they, they thought he was a ghost. They thought he was a ghost. And Jesus said, touch me. I'm, I'm flesh and blood. Can flesh and blood eat and all that? Touch my hands. You'll touch me. Put your finger in my hand. So that, that's what he was telling them. And then um, he breathed on them. He told them to receive the Holy Ghost. We're going to get into that a little bit. Um, but look at verse 24. 
But Thomas, one of the 12, called Dynamis. He was not with them when Jesus came. Now, where Brother Tommy at? <laughs> Brother Tommy, he wasn't with them. See, see, th th this, happened, this happened on Sunday night. So Christ had rose up from the grave. He, he, he met but Mary Magdalene first, right? Mary told them about what's happened. They came back. They probably all, what, y what happened? And then Jesus popped up on them, showed himself, said, peace be unto you. And they, they touched his hands and his feet. The Bible said that he showed them his hands and his side. He showed the disciples that I'm real. I got the marks right here. I got the proof of the evidence right here. So Christ showed them the evidence of his resurrection. But Brother Tommy wasn't with him. Where Brother Tommy at? See, see, we don't know where he was at, but he wasn't there. And see, I kind of see myself in Brother Tommy. I, I, I think I'm Brother, I think I'm Down Thomas. I, I really do. And, and I can see myself in Brother Tommy. You know, you know what I'm suggesting? Brother Tommy kept it real. Yeah. See, see, he's saying, what's the point? Yeah. If the Christ is dead, he gone, then I ain't, I, I ain't want to be with y'all right now. Yeah. <laughs> he, he kept it real. I want to be, be alone right now. Brother Tommy's probably going through some mental health issues. He probably going through depression. He probably was. Yeah. That's real. We, we don't know why he wasn't there, but he said, I ain't showing up to the Isle Prayer meeting. I ain't going to the assembly. I ain't going to church tonight. <laughs> I probably wouldn't either. I'm skipping this service. This, this is something like prayer meeting, and, and Jesus is dead. Then well, I ain't showing up. <laughs> I'll be like this: If Jesus wasn't, if he wasn't rolled, I wouldn't show up to church either. If I didn't believe he was raised from the dead, I would be at home watching the sports center, watching the March Madness game too, right? Because if I don't believe him that he rose from the dead, I would be out of church too. Why well, be there for what? What's the point? If Christ was dead, then what are we here for? So, so brother Thomas, I, I, I get I, I get brother Thomas in this thing, I get him, and he said, uh, verse twenty five said this. Now this is Sunday night happened. They had a Sunday night service assembly together, but brother Thomas he was he was out the picture right. Now some happened where they he came in maybe maybe he came late. It sounded like us. I don't know. Maybe he came late. <laughs> maybe he came another. Maybe maybe it's the next day. But at some point the disciples saw brother Tommy. They said, guess what happened? We saw the risen Lord. We saw him. And this is what Brother Tommy said. He said, except I shall see his hands, the print of the nails, and put my finger to his print of the side, and thrust my hand aside, I will not believe. Now look what this says. And it says, next Sunday, eight days later, <laughs> right, right? He came back. Now he's with the disciples now. And, and, and the Bible says that Tommy, Thomas was with them, and Guess what happened? Then, then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst of them again. So, so now Brother Tommy, in the midst, he, he with the crowd now, but he ain't believing because he said, I know I got to see this for myself. And Jesus popped up again and stood in the midst of them. Again, and said what? Peace be unto you. <laughs> you see that? And, and, and so now the second time he popped up, he said, Brother Tommy, come on, let me talk, let me talk, let me holler at you, bro. Let me holler at you. Come, come on, come on. Her, right here, right here, brother Tom. Here, here, here's my hands. Here's my side. Put your finger in my side, and that's what that's. So he came and met Thomas at his point of doubt. He 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 knew what Thomas was thinking. He knew that Thomas didn't believe. And the first thing he said, Thomas, come here. He came to him. Now, if it was me, now I saw all y'all cowards seven days later, and y'all ran out on me. We both be boys, man. What's up, bro? You ran up on me. Y'all ain't cool. We ain't cool. That's what Jesus would, that's what I would have done after all y'all cowards left me hanging. Peter, you supposed to be bold and stuff. You done ran off and hid. Thomas, you done ran off and hid. I would have came up and charged all up. up. <laughs> y'all supposed to be bold. What's up, bro? He didn't do that, though. He didn't condemn Thomas. He met him at his point of need. He met him at his point of doubt. And he told them, that's grace and mercy. Come talk to me. Touch me. Believe. And Thomas said, then said he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand and thrust it to my side. Be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered, said, my Lord and my God. See, when you meet the resurrected Savior, you can't help but to submit. You can't help but to bow down. You can't help but to bow down and call him Lord and your God. When you meet him, when you meet him from the grave, when you meet him, when you know who he really is, you don't got no problem submitting. Now, not, I ain't gonna go there. I, I will keep it going, brother. I will keep on moving because brother Drew got trouble today. It's water, but I ain't gonna go there. See, we got a problem with submission. 
But we shouldn't have problems submitting to the Lord if we know who he really is. See, the problem is we don't know who he is. We think he's just a soft teddy bear. He's just my friend. We don't have no honor and respect for him. When we see him in the Revelation, we come back. You better be all. You better have honor and respect for this man when we come back. The thing is, church folks don't have no respect for him. We don't have no honor of him. But when you meet him, you don't have no problem submitting to him. Now, back to Brother Tommy. See, remember, uh, Faith, go ahead, go ahead. Hold on, hold on, Faith, before you show that, before you show that. Thanks to modern times, <laughs> we can now look back and see how Brother Thomas looked like back in the day. Y'all believe it? See, see, now back in modern times, we got science technology. We can actually look at how Brother, how Brother Thomas looked like when, the, when Peter and Paul, not Paul, but when Peter, James, and John them said, hey, I have seen the Lord. I seen him myself, and Brother Thomas didn't believe. He said, I don't believe that. Faith, show, show us how he looked like. That's how he looked. That's, that's what Brother Thomas, man, get out of here. I don't believe that. that, that that's Brother Thomas. <laughs> that, that's how Thomas looked like. See, see that's how it looked, see? See? That, that's how Brother Thomas looked like. What are you talking about, Willie? What are you talking about, Willie? Jesus came back from dead. What are you talking about? I don't believe that. That's how it looked like. Now, he, he wasn't buying it. And I'm kind of like that, too. That's what I'm saying. I see myself in Brother Tommy. Like, y'all ain't going to throw nothing at me like that, you know. So it's just more we talking about millennials. See, I'm a millennial. See, we like to question some things. So y'all older heads, y'all just like, y'all are here, y'all, whatever. Whatever they tell us, what, but I ain't going to go there. But whatever they tell us on the mainstream media, we're going to believe it. See, see, Jeremiah, me and Jeremiah, me and Dita, them, we kind of like that other millennial generation. We kind of like, yeah, we, we need some more evidence. You got to show, you got to, I don't know. You know, I need some. I need to see some more proof and some evidence. We got, we're going to question some things. We ain't just going to let you just tell us anything without looking into it deeper. And I don't. I don't think there's something wrong with that. I don't look at that as really doubt. I look at that as more. Okay, I hear what you're saying, but I got to find out for myself. I got to find Jesus for myself. I got to reach out to Him myself. I want to have a personal relationship with this risen Savior myself. I'm not going to let your word dictate. You know what I'm saying? What's, what I think is real, I got to find out for myself and make my own decision. And I, so I don't, I don't think Brother Tommy is wrong for that. I think he done gave, we don't gave him a bad rap. Now remember this, y'all. Remember this. Brother Thomas, he had left everything to follow Jesus. He had left everything. See, we, 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 we think he is a doubter. We think he don't have no faith. But I'm going to show y'all that Brother Thomas, he wasn't, he wasn't no punk. Like, he, he was real, you know. He was heavily invested into Jesus' ministry. See, this is why he was probably suffering with some, some depression, you know, because he was heavily invested into the ministry of Jesus. You know, he left everything to follow him, and then he died, and that's why he didn't show up on that, on that Sunday morning, that Sunday night worship service, because he, he, he probably left, he probably felt like he had nothing else to live for, nothing else to, you know, if Christ had died, you know, then what am I going to go to service for? So he probably was going to a dep- state of depression. He left everything to follow him, and when he lost Jesus, he, he probably just lost himself and just probably thought, for what? So he just probably just wanted to mourn and be alone. I feel him on that. Yeah. Sometimes if you're mourning, you kind of want to be alone sometimes. Maybe, maybe you don't want to be around a whole bunch of folks. I think he'll keep it real because I probably would have felt like that too. They probably called my phone and texted me to come to Sunday's night service. I'm like, man, I'm going to miss this one, sister. I'm out. I ain't feeling it today. I probably would have skipped the service too. But... So we see that um, what happened with the disciples. See, Thomas, what, what happened with Thomas? Thomas was looking, he was looking for some more evidence. He wanted to experience the rest of Christ from himself. But see what happened, church folks? Thomas and the disciples, they had forgotten about Jesus' promises. They forgot what Jesus had taught and, and said before. Jesus has many times said, I'm going to, Go up here, I'm going to be handed over to the Gentiles, they're going to crucify me, but in three days I will rise again. Yeah. The temple is going to be destroyed, but in three days I'm going to rebuild it up. He told them that I'm going to be high lifted up, you know, yeah. <laughs> right? He said, if I be lifted up, then I will draw all men unto me. So he told them that he's going to, be, he's going to die, but he also told them that he's going to raise from the dead. Yeah. So when, when, his, when he died, that grief can take an effect on your mind. You know, that, that grief can make you not think clearly, because you're in grief mode. So 
what the disciples had did, they had forgot about all of Jesus' promises. All of his promises about his resurrection, his death, and, and, and the promise of the kingdom. They had forgot about all that, and they were just caught up in that grief. And I, I get that. So when we forget about God's word, when we forget about God's promises, guess what happens? Doubt naturally creeps in. Fear creeps in. When we forget about God's word, doubt going to come in. It's a byproduct of it. Fear going to come in. It's a byproduct of it. When we forget about the word of God, we open up the door to doubt and unbelief. And that's what happened with Brother Tommy. He, has, he forgot about the resurrected promises. Therefore, doubt just came on in. Fear just came on in because we lost focus on the word, what Christ told us was going to happen. He promised us that he's going to come back. And this is what happens to Christians today. This is where we're at in our churches today. We have forgotten God's word. We have forgotten God's promises. And this is why we don't care about the kingdom no more. Because we have forgotten about his promises. Christ said that he's going to come back again. But we don't forget about his promises. We don't care about it. We don't want him to come back. Because why? We tied up to this government. We want the kingdom. We want the kingdom of Biden rather than the kingdom of God. Oh, when it's crumbling, y'all better get off that ship while you can. So when we lose focus on God's word, his promises, doubt, unbelief comes in. We get fatigued. Spiritually, we get fatigued, right? Because all we see is this mess on this earth. All we see is death, destruction, chaos, evil, ungodly leaders, right? Um, we see a whole bunch of just negativity on the news. And we have forgot that God has gave us a better promise. God has said, I'm going to come back and take you to a kingdom. I'm going to give you eternal life. I'm going to give you an inheritance. I'm going to give you riches. You know, and, and we have forgot about his coming. And we got tied up to this world. And, and naturally, the church is in a bad state. We, we, we have doubt. We have fear. We have unbelief because we forgot about his promises. He promised that he's going to return one day. We got to hold on to that stuff. And it, it, we're gonna get, we'll, we'll get awakened to it. We'll get awakened to it. When, when, when your stuff starts to crumble, you're going to be, Jesus, come back. Lord, help us. Come, come back and get us, Lord. Whenever it starts to crumble, we're going to be praying for the kingdom to come. But until right now, we're too comfortable. We're we feeling good. We got an AC on. We're going to go home and watch the Lone Ranger. We're going to turn the AC on cold. We're going to sleep in our comfortable king size bed, a two story house. But when this stuff starts to crumble, oh, Lord, come back quickly, Lord Jesus. But instead, we're too comfortable. Oh, y'all, I know y'all don't like that word, but it's a real long time word. Now, watch this. Now, Thomas. You ever heard of a ride or die? I need a ride or die chick. That's what they say back in the day. I need a ride. I need, a ride. I need me a ride or die. I want me somebody that's going to ride or die for me, right? Yeah. You heard that, Sister Tiffany? You heard, of ride, you heard of that, Sister Tiffany? See, see Thomas was like, he a, he a G. You heard of a G? Thomas was like a gangster. He was, that's a G. I'm, a, I'm a G with mine. Thomas was a real G. I'm going to show you why he was a G. Now, at the end of, earth, of Jesus' earthly ministry, people... The, the religious Jews, they were plotting to kill him. They wanted to stone him because he was getting popular. The Bible said his fame started to rise, and the Jews wanted to kill him because he was getting too popular and too famous. So he had a lot of death threats on his life. So um, you remember the story of Lazarus? Faith, give me that John 11. Give me that John 11 verse. So... Um, we see that the story of Lazarus, Lazarus, he was, he was, he was about to die, right? And uh, Jesus said, you know, he was late. He, he delayed his, his turn to Lazarus on purpose so that, so that God can get magnified, right? Wow. But, but they was waiting to kill Jesus back in Judea. They wanted to kill him, right? Now, look at, look at verse 16, Faith. This, this is John. So Jesus told the disciples, uh, we're going to go back to Judea, and I'm going to raise Lazarus from the dead so, that Christ would be, so God could be glorified. The disciples trying to say, don't go, go don't, let's not go back to Judea because they're trying to kill you. They're trying to stone you. Don't go back to, to raise Lazarus from the dead because if you go back, they're going to stone us and kill us. That's what, that's what the rest of the disciples said. But look, look what my boy Tommy say. Tommy says, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. That's not like a ride or die to me. <laughs> and y'all call him Doubting Thomas? 
Hey, okay, he was ready to die with the Lord. Oh, oh, can, I say, can I ask y'all that? Some of y'all ain't ready. I pray that I'm ready. So he said, let us go and die with him. That's not like a soldier to me. That's not like somebody you want on your team to me. That's not like somebody faithful to me. That don't sound like no doubt Thomas to me. That's not like somebody real who got your back. Now, I pray y'all, this is free advice. I pray y'all, when y'all come to the kingdom, don't, don't run up on Brother Tommy like that. No, hey, hey, don't run up on him like that. I call him Brother Down Thomas. Hey, he may lay his on you. Hey, hey, Brother Thomas ain't playing around. See, we make fun of him in the church talking about Down Thomas, but go meet him in the kingdom, see what happens. He gonna pull one of those. Hey, but Down Thomas may put them hands on y'all. Hey, I'm just, I'm looking at his character. Thomas was ready to die for the Lord. So what I see in Brother Thomas is he was deeply committed to his master. Yeah, he struggled with some doubts. He had some questions, but we knew that he was deeply committed to him. He, was, he just kept it real. So, yeah, he, he, he got his nickname, Down Thomas, but uh, I believe he was more skeptical. I believe that uh, he just wanted to know the truth for himself. Um, there's a difference between, you know, uh, worldly opposition and just, you know, just, just evil unbelief. And, and, and just having doubts and questions. There's a difference between that. And I think, I think Thomas just, he just had some doubts and he had some questions. You know, he was a little skeptical. And I'm like that too. Y'all know me. I'm like that too. Like, I don't know. You know, I heard some stories. There's a lot of stories about these people coming back from heaven. I'm like, okay. They, they, they wrote books and made money off of it. And then they come, come back and say, that was a lie. The, the, the 13 year old boy, he done made some money off these little stuff. Told me he went to heaven and came back, made all this money. Then it then came out and said, I'll just lie. I'll just play that. And he made all this money off of it. Get the money back then. They don't get the money back. And I'm like, mm, no, something ain't right. And then a lot of folks said they went to hell and came back, and they still living like hell. Yeah. If I went to hell, I, when I come back, uh-uh. Oh, man, I'll be church every Sunday. Mm, mm, mm. No. So I'm just saying, I'm one, I'm one of them skeptics, too. I'm, I, I, feel, I feel Thomas in this. I'm kind of skeptical, too. Like, no. Now, I had, I had some doubts. Have anybody had doubts before? You know, I had, I had some struggles with the Lord, you know. I had some beef with the Lord. You know, one of my beefs, you know, was the racism and slavery. And if you came to Wednesday night, it makes sense now. Um, you know, y'all had to be there. But I, he, he, he met my doubt. Just, just like he came to Brother Tommy and said, reach out my hand. I was fighting with the Lord. What's up with this racism? Stuff up with this slavery thing? It don't make no sense. But I kept on believing. I kept on, let me, let's get through it. And now I see it all makes sense now. And now I get it. Okay, you know, we cool. Okay, I get it, Lord. I see what you're going to do. I see how you're doing this thing. So, but he met me at my need. You know, I had to keep on pursuing them, keep on chasing out to them, you know, and now it makes sense. A lot of stuff will make sense if you have an honest pursuit of the truth. Just pursue the truth honestly. You don't have to believe everything. You don't have to, you don't have to agree with everything. You don't have to understand everything, but just keep seeking them. And I bet he's going to meet you in your need. I bet he will. There's nothing wrong with having doubts and, and some concerns, but it's got to be at a, at a pure heart. And I think Brother Tommy had a, a pure heart. You know, he just wanted to know for himself. He wasn't going to hear the word of Peter and, and the word of John and James. That wasn't, that wasn't good enough. The word of pastor and co-pastor ain't good enough for me. It's great. But I got a fact that this was the Lord. I got to see what the Lord said about it and let the Lord reveal it to me. And we can roll, yeah, know it for myself. I get it. And that, see, these TV preachers, they don't want you to fact check nothing. They, you know how Facebook got fact checkers now? They got the fact check. We don't want to fact check nothing now. We just, whatever he say, right? He the big man. If he say it, then I believe it. But we need to go back behind that brother and say, what the word, what's, what scripture was that again, brother? It don't make no sense. Oh, this ain't that, not, brother. Hold on. The Bible say this. You, you saying that you unsure or you kind of, the Bible makes it black and white. This ain't right. So you got to go back and fact check these preachers a lot. They got a whole bunch of stuff wrong suggested. <laughs> but we're going to keep moving. Um, another thing, look, look at Thomas on this thing here. Um, so Thomas, his, he had an honest skepticism. We almost done, y'all. We almost done. But he had, a, he had an inquisitive nature, you know, and it prompted him to ask. Uh, Faith, go to John 14, 1 through 6. See, Thomas had an inquisitive nature. He wanted to know. You know, he wanted to know. And I think we also want to be like that. Now, look at this. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Keep going. 
In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. See, these are these promises he's talking about. Do y'all want this? Do y'all want this promise? He's been gone for a minute now, and he's preparing a place for us. I think that the place he's preparing for us is going to be a lot better than what we got today. <laughs> I'm just asking. We got a mansion raiding on us over there. Over there, over here, we live in Section 8 HUD houses and, <laughs> and the hood. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying, I, I, I'm going to go where Christ going to build a mansion for me. You know, that's what I'm looking forward to, Sister, Sister Deborah. Y'all can have this here. Y'all can have it. Y'all can have it. I ain't, I'm not missing out on this. But that's the promise that he gave us. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know it. Right? Now, keep on going. Now, look what Thomas said. Everybody boy, Tommy again, y'all. Tommy, keep it real. Thomas said, okay, I hear all this stuff you're talking about, but where is it at? <laughs> Thomas said, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? And this is the famous verse right here. Verse 6. Jesus said I, unto him, he said it to Thomas. See that? Yeah. See, Thomas wants to know what you're talking about. All this stuff you talk about, these mansions, and you pray to play. Well, where is it at? <laughs> I need a road back. I want to go. I want to go. How, how, can I Google it? <laughs> can I press start in my direction? Give me the address, Lord. That's what Thomas wanted to know for real. Thomas said, play. I want to know where it's at. <laughs> it sounded good. He got, he got a, his appetite all wet up like Brother Henry be doing. That's yeah, good old ice cream. I want some of the ice cream, too. He done wet, he done wet his whistle. Now, Thomas want to know what's the deal is. And he told Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to me unto the Father but by me. So Thomas had an inquisitive nature. He wanted to know some things. Shouldn't we have that type of nature today? Don't we want to know some things? Have we been lied to for so long? We should be looking into some stuff. And y'all know what I'm talking about, but I'm not going to make it about that today. So Jesus, watch this, co-pastor. Jesus showed up and gave them five things. It's, it's, we're going to go back to that main scripture, but uh, I'm not going to go back to the scripture. But it's, it's found in that main uh, scripture. We're talking about John 20, verse 18 through 31. He, gave, he showed up and gave them five things. The first thing he gave them was peace. So when he came on, he told them about three times, he said, peace be unto you. So he gave them peace. The second thing he gave them was assurance. He, sh he showed them that I am he in the flesh. Keep all your doubts. Erase your doubts. He gave them assurance that I'm the resurrected Christ. I'm not a, I'm not a ghost. I'm not a, a, a pastor. I'm the one. I can prove it by my hands and my nail prints on my side. I, I'm going to give you my evidence. Yeah. Right? See, we got to look at this as evidence. Where's the evidence? Third thing, co pastor gave him the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm going to breathe on you, the Holy Ghost. Guess what else he gave him? He gave him authority. He said, he gave him authority. He said, you forgive him, I forgive him. You don't forgive him, they say he'll be retained. That's authority. <laughs> That's something serious, right? Go look back over that scripture again. He gave him authority. And the last thing he did, he gave them a mission. As, I, as the Father sent me, I sent unto you. So he gave them a job, <laughs> gave them a mission to do, gave them an assignment. So he didn't rebuke none of them. So I would have came back, I would have rebuked all of them. I would have rebuked Peter and every last one of y'all. I would have showed my tail. <laughs> I would have showed my tail. You know, I would have showed out. But he didn't rebuke none of them. He said, peace be unto you. He gave them grace. He was, he was, he was uh, you know, um, forgiven of them. He didn't, he didn't call them out by their name. And we know we need peace in these last days and times. We need peace and we need the Holy Ghost in these last days and times. We definitely need it. So, so we also see a blessing to us where it says that uh, blessed are those who um, believe, blessed are those who have not, who believe and not seen me. He's talking about us. So we got a special blessing. Um, it said, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. But blessed are they that have not seen, yet ye have believed. So we haven't seen him. I hope you haven't, right? Uh, if somebody say y'all see them, I'm going to look at y'all funny too. I'll be like down tough. I see them, Brother Jeremy. I see them, Brother Reed. He came up to me, showed me like, I'm going with Brother Er. But I ain't seen them, right? But it says that we're still blessed because 
we don't have to see him, but we can still believe on him. And so there's a special blessing for every last one of us today by believing in him without even seeing him. Now, I, that, that, don't, that doesn't mean that we don't have no evidence, right? We still got evidence. Um, and we're going to talk about a little bit of evidence right here in the future real quick. But, um, but Jesus gave them a blessing that because you, you believe me because you've seen me, but blessed are those who, have, who believe but not seen. So we give down Thomas a bad name. We give him a bad rap. Um, but I think he just demanded some more evidence. You know, he, you know, he wanted to, um, I, think we, I think he should be better known for his loyalty and his obedience than his doubt. You know, I think we gave him a bad name. But Thomas, he refused to believe the testimony of the many witnesses. They were reliable. These were disciples. You know, this is Peter, James, and John them. You know, they ain't going to lie. What they need to lie for? But, it's, they, but they were still wasn't good enough. So he had these conditions that I need to see them for myself. So um, I, think, I think he's okay with that. I think, I think he's all right with that. And now he says, my Lord and my God. So Thomas, when he, met the, when he met the resurrected Christ, he can he had he he can not help but to understand that this was Yahweh in the flesh. This this is the God of the heaven that came and down in the form of a man and died for our sins. So he recognized him. He recognized who he really was. This is God in the flesh. So he said, "My Lord and my God." So his doubt became belief. When he saw the resurrected Christ, he believed. So. Um, and we talked about it before. We see that Thomas probably had a broken heart. You know, he probably uh, wants to be left alone. He probably just wants to, I don't want time to be talking to y'all today. I don't want to see no church folks on Sunday night. I just want to be by myself. That's probably with Thomas. And I probably would be the same thing if my Lord and Savior had died. And I didn't even know he raised, came back. I just think he did. I don't want to see none of y'all. <laughs> Give me a week. <laughs> Maybe more by myself, right? Or this is me. I, I told you I'm Thomas. You know? Y'all probably Apostle Paul in there. Y'all up there, you know. Y'all, y'all up there. I'm, I'm, I'm down Thomas. I, I, I show you who I am in the Bible. Y'all in the Bible too somewhere. You just figure it out. <laughs> y'all could be the enemy. Y'all could be. The, hey, figure, figure who you are in the Bible. I know. I don't mean literally, y'all. I know how, y'all know. Y'all make it plain. Jeremy said he was in the Bible. <laughs> y- y- y'all know church folk. Yo, yo, you got, you got to make it plain. I'm saying there's characteristics of people in the Bible that you have, you can associate with, right? Thomas is one of mine. I can associate with Thomas because I, I'm skeptical and too. I got questions too. I got to find out for myself too, right? And I, I think that's a good thing to have. So um, now in the book of Acts, you don't have to go there, but the Bible says that, um, Faith, do I got that Acts? Do I got that on there? Let's, let's pull it up. This is interesting. So after the resurrection, we don't really talk about this part much, but it says, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. Amen. Stop right there. So we're talking about some evidences. See, I like evidences. The court of law, you need evidences. And the Roman soldiers evidence that it was witnesses that he died physically. And then the disciples was evidence that he rose from the grave. So we got some witnesses. We got eyewitnesses. And you know in the court of law, some of y'all people that know the court of law, right, you want, you want to have some eyewitnesses. You want to have an eyewitness testimony, right? I seen them. And so he had 10 eyewitnesses that said, hey, he came back from the grave, right? So that's, that's, that's good proof to have in the court of law. Eyewitnesses, that can, get, that, can, that can really put the nail on the head, right? Um, now look at this, another one. He said, so he said he, he showed many infallible proofs that he was rose from the dead. Being seen of them 40 days, speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So, so not only did he appear to, to the disciples, he appeared to the masses. He stayed on the earth over, uh, over a month later and just chilled with them over a month. See, we're thinking he, he rose from dead and I got to go. <laughs> I'm, I'm out. He stayed on the earth for 40 days after his resurrection. So anybody who had doubt, you could see him. This the man who was dead, he's chilling with us eating fish fries and stuff, you know. And, and he said that uh, he was speaking them pertaining to the kingdom of God. Boy, I would love to be there. Oh, what was he telling them about the kingdom? What was the resurrected Lord telling these people about the kingdom of God? It had to be deep. That's the resurrected Lord. He talked about pertaining to the kingdom of God. He, had to, he would probably drop some gems on these folks. But he said he stayed there 40 days afterwards. So that's more 
undisputable evidence that he rose from the dead, that he wasn't no ghost, that he just wouldn't sleep on, on when he died. He, he was actually dead and came back, and he's chilled with them 40 days. So anybody who had doubt, you know there was word on the street. Came, you know it was on Facebook post, and y'all, y'all, I, got a, I got a picture of the resurrected of Jesus. Y'all, y'all heard he came back from dead? You, you know the rumor came, got out. And so he said, I'm going to just chill with y'all 40 more days. So anybody who had questions, y'all can come see me. And so that word probably went out. And, 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 and he made proof that he was who he was. Amen. So those are some of the things that we can take from uh, Thomas. Uh, we see that he had eyewit- we had eyewitness testimonies, uh, that he was alive after his resurrection. So what more evidence do we need today? These evidence will hold up in the court of law. That's right. You know, so um, Thomas lost one opportunity, you know, when he... One of his things he did do, he, he did forsake the fellowship of the believers, right? Yeah. So that's something we got to think about, right? When we get depressed and we get sad, we like to run off. Yeah. I do that. Yeah. I, I, don't talk to me. I want to just chill and let me deal with it. And that may not be the best move to make. You know, you may want to be around some fellowship of the believers to help you up, give you a courage and word. So that's what Thomas missed a little blessing there because the t- disciples saw it when Christ came back. He, they was there. But Thomas missed that little blessing. You know, he missed that. He wasn't, he wasn't part of the group. Right. Or he came late. Yeah. So y'all, y'all know what it is. So sometimes we can miss our blessing. Stay away from church. Stay away from church folks. You know. So that's one thing he did. He, he went to isolation mode. You know, I, I do that. Me and, me and Pastor, we kind of similar. We like, we like to be alone sometimes. Sometimes we're loners. You know, if, if your personality, some, some people are just loners. Yeah. Sometimes people just don't want to be around a lot of people. And that's just me, you know. Yeah. I ain't said I'm antisocial, but it's part of your our personality is different. You know, sometimes I like to be isolated. Especially if you're going through something like that, but you still need Christian fellowship. Amen. We shouldn't be just isolated forever. You know, take a little time away, take a little day or two away, just go. You know, yeah, but come back. Don't run off, right? I'm just trying to make it practical. Don't run off. <laughs> come back. Take a little time away. Take, take, take a little vacation, whatever it is. Ooh, it's getting hot up here now. Ooh, Jesus. Ooh. All right, I'm out though. I'm I'm done. Um, so that's one thing he, he kind of missed out on. But, you know, he was going through some grief. He was going through some suffering. He was going through some pain, right? He was real. We need some real Christians in the last day of time, don't we? We need some real believers, right? <laughs> I'm tired of all these super Christians and, you know, y'all don't go through nothing. Y'all don't, y'all don't have no doubts. Y'all don't, you don't have no concerns. You know, everything you read, you cool with it. Like, you be, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't agree with everything, but I got to submit to it, you know. I know it's real. I, I wish some of this stuff wasn't in the Bible. I wish hell wasn't real. I wish hell was, you know, something that could just, like the Catholic Church, say you can go for an hour and then be gone and be out of I wish it was true. But that's something, hey, leave it up to him. I got to submit to the word. Amen. So I don't have to agree with everything, but I got to submit. I, I'm sure me and Pastor agree with 100% everything, but that's fine. But I got to submit to his authority. Yeah. I got to su- come under him. And we don't have to agree with 100% nobody say. I don't think we're going to agree 100% on anything. Just, just we human beings. But we got to know the order. We got to know authority. I, just because I don't believe in a uh, pastor may have a, a, a different opinion on something, me going to be fighting. Well, this that says here. But this says here. Y'all can both be right. Or you can both be wrong. <laughs> but I know my place. I got to submit. That's what we got a problem with. To submit to authority. That's another topic, though. But see, and this is, what, this is one thing, another thing I like about uh, Brother Thomas. And I'm done, y'all. He refused to say he understood something that he did not. He kept it real. See, Thomas, see, Thomas said, I don't, I don't understand this, but he wasn't going to fake it, though. See, some of us, we want to fake it. We, we like to pretend you know, that, that, you know, Thomas, he kept it real. He wasn't a pretender. So we have a lot of pretending people today. A lot of people, they, they pretend, and they'll go along with it so they can fit in, but then they got a whole doctrine behind them that's trying to separate themselves. So, you know, uh, we got a lot of pretenders in the church. Thomas wasn't going to, he wasn't, he wasn't going to just be with the group and act like he was cool and act like, you know, just because they said, I'm, I'm cool with it. He had say, no, no, I, I, I got to find out for myself. I'm not going to pretend about it. I'm going to keep it real. I, I got some doubts. And so, because he had these doubts, he had to wait a whole week. He had, he had to hold away a whole week. But see, sometimes your blessing could be delayed, though, you know what I'm saying? Because you, you're, not with your, you're not with your family, you're not with your Christian family, you're not with the church folk. The blessing can come, but it may have to be delayed by the week. You know, God has to make a special time for you. <laughs> you would have had it a whole week earlier, but God had to make a special delivery for your time because, you know, he don't, he, don't, he don't some other stuff. And we all are guilty on that, right? 
Thank God that he can meet us at our point of need. Thank God that he can do that. And I'm going to close it down, but, you know, all believers today, you know, we got to bless them because we believe without seeing the physical Christ, right? Now, when, we come, when he comes back, he's going to come back physically. Now, we're going to believe him. We're going to see him, you know. Um, but one thing we can learn from Thomas, you know, I like Thomas because by nature, I, too, am a skeptical person. You know, I can call myself out on that. I'm a skeptic by nature. Stop looking at me, face. You love laughing at me. To see faith, though. But I'm skeptical by nature, right? I like to question and, 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 and find out for myself, too. I got, I got to investigate. I like to investigate some stuff. Let me look into the matter a little further. Let me see what, let me see what this is about. Let me, let me look at it a little bit more until I can take your word for it and run off with it. Let me question this a little bit. So I never was the one to believe something just because someone said it's true. Amen. And I think we can take something from that, right? Just because somebody says it's true, uh, your, your, your internet, your, your uh, government, uh, uh, your politicians, uh, ringing the bell here, anyone? Yeah. Just because somebody saying something on the TV don't mean it's true. Some some things we could question. Oh, y'all don't want this. Y'all don't want this. <laughs> y'all, 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 y'all move on. Oh, it's getting hot up in here. Just because a man said it don't mean it's true. I don't care who they is. I ain't just talking about him over there on the left. I'm talking about the one on the right, too. I'm talking about all of them. Just because he got a CDC in his name? Oh. Oh. My God. Do your own research. You ain't got to just jump. Let me, let me move on. Let me move on. Question these folks. That's what I'm going to say. Question these folks. If, if it's any time to question these politicians, it's now. If any, if any time to have skeptic and be a doubter of, of your politicians, it's today. Thank you, sister. Thank you. <laughs> it's today. Back in the day, okay, but today you you need to be questioning these folks, and get to, get back to the word. What does the word say about it? And let the word be your guide. Let the word, let the Holy Spirit be your guide, not these politicians, because well, they gonna lead us down to the wrong road. The road they lead us to is the dead end. Oh, I said it. So in, in my closing, you may have a lot of questions deep down inside, you know. But if you, if you really want to know God, he's going to meet you at your point of need. He's going to really meet you. If you really want to know him, he's going to reveal the truth to you. So take your doubts. Take your unbelief. Take them to the Lord. Take them in prayer. Fast about it. Pray about it. But I promise you, he's going to show up. I promise you. Just like he did in the midst of them, he's going to show up. And guess what, church? In these last days and time, he's going to show up for us. He's going to show up for us. He's going to show up for us. We, we, we may have a down season. We may have a, 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 you know, we may have a storm coming. But guess what? He's going to show up. He ain't forgotten about us. He ain't forgotten about us. Oh, that's a prophetic word right there. He going to show up. When we assemble together, he going to show up. Just watch what we do in these last days. Watch what we do through y'all people. Wait, just watch what we do to y'all in the last days. He going to show up. I, I, I promise you that. I promise you that. Even though it get dark, he going to show up. And that dark time is only a brief moment. It's only a brief moment, church. That night don't last forever. <laughs> that night is only a night season. It's only a night. But joy cometh in the morning. Amen. Amen. Get back. Get back to you.